We have a really stellar panel of community artists um, from across the city. Um, I'm gonna ask them all to just introduce themselves, tell us a little bit about who they are, who they work with um, and, and what brought them to this work. And then I've got a couple of questions for them to get the conversation going. Um, so first I will ask Sam Rodriguez from Walls for Justice to introduce himself. Hello everyone, good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. I see a lot of familiar faces, uh, but I'm gonna you know, continue to speak as if no one knows me. So I'm Sam Rodriguez. I am a, primarily a teaching artist here in the city. Uh, secondarily, I'm a founder and executive director for Walls for Justice. Walls for Justice is a nonprofit organization that I created in June 2020 as a way to connect and unite local artists, businesses, and community members together. So during the civil unrest that happened in June 2020, I used that opportunity to connect with residents, artists, and businesses to respond to what was happening directly. And a year later, I am using the continuation of that project and the nonprofit to support local nonprofits, businesses, and community members and community leaders to support the work and the shared mission of using art as a platform to create social change. So that's just a little bit of who I am um, and what I do. And I'm happy to be here with you guys. Hello, thanks for uh, everybody showing up today. Um, I'm a, a local resident in Kensington. And like Bay had said, I uh, do a lot of work with mural arts and their programming and kind of cover different areas of like um, restorative justice, art ed, large scale, small scale murals, business murals. But um, my focus, the things I like to do for my personal work is kind of collaborative art with other artists and focus on community. I like to kind of find people that inspire me or I feel like they're doing good in the world and putting good energy out. So my goal is to kind of help them to do that more and highlight their what they're doing to let, let them know, kind of keep it up. And, you know, people are seeing you and if that inspires people to do more than that, that I feel is like the goal, real goal of artists to challenge people's thoughts and allow them to see, view things from different perspectives and also uh, to show that vision and uh, create, be able to take other people's vision and, and use your own vision to create that. And also, just be an artist. I think it's important to collaborate with other artists. One, it, it keeps you from getting too in your own head. It's a way I've personally been able to learn and have uh, different opportunities and not get stale as an artist. And then also, you can't underestimate the art community that you're in. I'm fortunate that uh, everybody on the panel, I've had the opportunity to work with on some level and know their work and know what they do. I'm excited that they're getting this platform to share that. That's all, peace. Hey, what's going on everyone? Um, like Sammy said, um, I do see a few familiar faces, so I'm excited about that. This is my first time being on here. So again, I'll introduce myself like no one knows me. Um, my name is Christian Rodriguez. I go by Tame Arts. 
A um, little about me, I was born in Puerto Rico, moved from Puerto Rico to the Lower East Side of Manhattan, lived there in the late 70s, um, moved to Philly early 80s, and been an active member in the hip hop culture and graffiti culture since 88. Um, I've been blessed and honored to travel the world um, through my art, um, been a curator for a little bit over 22 years. Um, as far as Sunflower Philly, it's a nonprofit. We started three and a half years ago. I'm one of the founding members. Um, I'm currently the vice president and art director as well. Um, what we do at Sunflower Philly is we believe that activating community through art, music, and sustainability is the way that you connect the whole world. So we basically actively move with those three subjects in mind. Um, we have a neighborhood cleanup branch. Um, we also have, just like Sammy, we do um, some beautification of the community and the neighborhood. Um, last year, also during the time of the unrest and everything, um, towards the end of it, like around September, um, me and my business partner, Bill, we launched what is hashtag Safe Philly Restaurants. Um, we believe that saving Philly restaurants is actually a really critical thing. Restaurants in general um, around the world are the number one employer of minority employees. It's also the number one workforce of creative employees, meaning arts, musicians. No other workforce has more artists and creatives working for them. Also, all around the world, the restaurant business and the workforce is the number one in promoting minorities to management positions of those things. So, you know, when you think about that and you realize how many people you're connected to the work in that field, just felt necessary to kind of push and, um, you know, promote saving the Philly restaurants for us being in Philly. Um, and as of last weekend, we've currently done 32 restaurants in the city um, since the end of September of last year. So um, yeah, it's great. Um, as well, I also host a monthly art event at Sunflower Philly. This year, I'll, I'll say it now so everyone could come. Hopefully um, you guys are available, but March 27th, I always launch my season with the power of the earth, um, our females, our women um, who are the earths. And um, I love to launch the season in Sunflower Philly with them. So it's a uh, Full event just based around all women artists, creatives, um, and just, you know, is basically a showcase of the power and the women creatives. Last but not least, we have Cass Green, who is our project coordinator for the Weekend Project. But bigger than that, she is also a community artist um, and works with the Mill Creek Community Partnership with the Fine Art Through Our Eyes. Um, Community Arts Initiative. So Cass, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks a lot, B. So yeah, I mean, this is what I do in my spare time, right? Um, so yeah, so I've been an artist basically all of my life. Um, I actually went to school um, um, for art. I'm a textile designer um, by trade and a master printer. And then um, I actually was able to work at University of Pennsylvania for 25 years, which of 17 of them, I worked at the Institute of Contemporary Art. And I was actually, that was my dream job. I was their business and building administrator. And I was able to learn that there were so many different fields and careers in art that I had never been exposed to or knew about. And so during my tenure at Institute of Contemporary Art, um, I met my mentor who has now passed on, but he approached me about starting a nonprofit um, in the Mill Creek community. And so, oh, just for some context, I am from Newark, New Jersey. Um, I'm a Philadelphia transplant. And so when he invited me to join him in opening up the Mill Creek Community Partnership, he, the first initiative we did was um, I'll start Fine Art Through Our Eyes, Young Artist Initiatives. And basically that was based around providing accessible and creative avenues for folks in the hood, in the community, right? And also a port, an important part of that is that we focused on artists of color. 
because by working at Institute of Contemporary Art and being familiar with the Philadelphia Museum of Art, we realized that our communities did not have a lot of visuals and interactions with artists that looked like them and that were from their communities. And so that was the premise of Fine Art Through Our Eyes, which started in 2015. And so this year we're actually 15 years old. Um, we have expanded throughout the Mill Creek community, the West Philadelphia area, and now we're basically citywide. We have partnered with about 80, 90 agencies over the years. And we are the proud owners of the Art Bus, which was a part of the Philadelphia Assembly exhibition that was at PMA about three or four years ago. And it was a cross neighborhood um, collaborative of artists that came together. And one of their um, projects was the Futures Bus. And when the exhibition closed, they gifted that Art Bus, well, the bus to us. And we had it then turned into what we call the Art Bus, which means that we have a mobile unit that can go from block to block, place to place, neighborhood to neighborhood to again, you know, just be accessible to bring art and most importantly, just the creative process um, to community engagement. And that is also fueled by, although my work is centered around community engagement, I always feel like approaching it from a creative artistic lens is the way you can have a common language to bring community together and that everybody has a creative spirit within them. So I'm really excited to be here with you all and with a great group of panelists, which I hold in high esteem and regard. So our first question um, for all of our panelists to answer, I'd love to hear everyone chime in, um, is really the main topic of the evening is, you know, what can public art do for a community? How can it activate? community. Um, and I will throw it to Tam Arts first. I'm sitting here thinking, don't pick me first, but it's all good. No, all good. Um, so the question is, how can art in public spaces connect to community? Um, I mean, it, in various ways, I personally like to make every mural that I do in the community kind of like an event to make it like an icebreaker of sorts for new and standing community. And what I mean by new is um, those of you guys that live in Philadelphia, for the most part, our city is one of the most gentrified um, cities in America. Um, and we have a lot of development coming in. And there's also a lot of um, standing community, especially like in the North Philly community and where I do a lot of my work. Um, there's a heavy standing community, which most or not maybe not most a lot of individuals don't have the the i guess the language to get in regular conversations with newcomers that's coming into the neighborhood to defend themselves in that aspect um and what i've realized is that a lot of people that live in the community and those people that are coming in new there's this there's these like invisible walls that i've noticed that comes from language barrier, culture differences. Um, and I feel like, you know, with art and putting a little bit of music attached to that as well, you're able to connect because those two things are things that no matter who you are, what color you are, what age you are, it's something that gravitates to all of us. So using art in a public space as a bridge to, you know, tear, help tear down those walls, help communicate or be like a translator for those that don't know English, to communicate with the new people and you know the new people that don't speak Spanish translate for them what I've noticed I've, I've seen a lot of success with that and you know the start of that comes through the art so I would say yes it's very important I think it's critical um it's one of the most critical things in um in our communities to have this aspect of art or like this like plug-in to art because it's something that everybody around the world could connect with. Um, I can chime in. I think uh, one thing by creating art in public, one, it's free. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to pay to see that. Usually it's in the neighborhood. It could be all kinds of art levels. Um, also, I think art allows 
a lot like what Tang says, the create these conversations and kind of sometimes you can connect like on hard issues, you know, like uh, actually I worked with Sam on Sunday and I did peace with his thing. It was sort of, and they were getting out kid, kids toys and and clothes for kids but I, I want to do something that spoke sort of like issues we were dealing with as far as kids. So like um, I kind of drew a picture of a kid like pushing a toy police car and his thought was like, man, I just like to go outside and play, stop the violence. So I think our can like have a easy way of like creating these conversations for social change. And especially in like uh, neighborhoods where they're pr maybe not getting represented as properly as they should. And then it, it also inspires like young people because usually in these neighborhoods like art and music that's like the first thing to go out the budget so by doing like creating these public spaces like like what tame is doing you know allowing kids to paint art or some of the workshops like sam does or cast does go in these communities it kind of helps give those kids art and that art is like a thing that it, it's like a philosophical creative type thing so without that and not kids not receiving that teaching in school then you they kind of don't have that that tool in their toolbox per se. Uh, Cass, would you like to go? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, thanks. Yeah, both of you like were so eloquent in, in your statements. Um, also like in public space and and so I think about it because I, I also have an administrative background and a community engagement background. When I think about public space, I, I think about it almost as like a canvas, right? Because some people say, oh, are you still painting? Well, I think about everything we do um, when we interact with community and with residents and with space is like approaching it from like a blank canvas, right? And you can then take uh, a myriad of tools and resources and pull them all together. And I, I, I think about it like we can either take this thing and wrap it in a big red bow or we can create a masterpiece. So that very thing that may look like an abandoned lot or a broken down building or, you know, people might be in certain different types of situations with art, you can actually take it and take all those elements and come out with something beautiful and creative and inspiring and hopeful that you may not have thought you had access to those items, but they can develop out of public space. Um, you know, the grass is something, the, 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 the bottles or the cans that you pick up become something else. So it's kind of like manipulating space um, to become masterpieces. I, I think about it like that and how everybody can enter into that space um, in an accessible way. And, and I sometimes get the biggest thrill out of the person or the people who say to us, like they'll say, I'm not an artist, right? We all get that, right? The first thing people say, oh, I'm not an artist. I'm not an artist. And usually those are the people that can take something and you know, they'll take that piece of paper, this thought bubble, and something magnificent will come out of that very thought bubble. And we can approach it from a space perspective. And also that um, they always say that like, you know, with public space, a lot of times it's with these lots or abandoned buildings. And 
we all know this, right? The gentrifiers know that, you know, somebody else's trash is somebody's treasures. And so it allows us to uplift the treasures that are in our community that have value and worth and also give us memory and a cultural perspective that is right within our own hoods, right? We don't always have to go outside and look for that great um, masterpiece. The masterpiece is within on the ground with us where we live, eat, play, and love. Awesome. Sorry, go ahead, Sam. So just really quickly, I just want to add to everything that everyone was saying, because it was just, it all connects. And the way I want to connect it and frame it is that art is universal. We all said it in our own way. And what I found out that what art can do for the community is everything that we listed and more. And when we talk about art, for me, art ignites change. And in my language, it's it offers creative solutions for problems that we're facing. And in terms of what Tame was saying, um, these walls that get created and divide us, what I found out what art can do is literally we can turn real walls into an embrace between community members, businesses, and that's you know what I've done through my work. Also, you know, art is the common language that we can use to communicate effectively without any malintentions with people. And I found that no matter where I was working, no matter what community, you know, the power of art was able to shift the narrative, no matter where I was. And I've painted in some pretty scary places. Um, but to say that, you know, is that art has the total power to transform someone's perception of, you know, what's going on around you. Art can also be a bridge, a connector, you know, the same way how community and business come together through Walls for Justice and through the collaboration of We Can and all of the other artists here. You know, um, overall, art just has that creative solution and what I've seen it do is, you know, it empowers and amplifies local so social justice movements. It empowers people to participate and be a part of what's happening. It provides an outlet for community members. It impacts mental health. And overall, it really shows people what I, um, it shows everyday people that, you know, change can happen individually within all of us. And, you know, that's just speaking from my experience, what I've seen, you know, like art, what can art do for a community? It's brilliant, all four of you, it just lifting up what's, what's already there, you know, like you're, you come into a community and you, you see the, the strengths, the assets, the, the the brilliance that's already there, and amplify it and and connect it, and it's it's a beautiful, inspiring thing that really does, as you said, Sam, ignite change. Um, so the next question is how how do we go about doing this? Like, what is your process? What do you do when you come into a community or when you start a new project? Like. For, for the folks on this call, like we're hoping that some folks might be like, I wanna do something. Like I wanna raise my hand, I wanna get involved. So like, what does it look like um, as a process? And Sam, since you were just talking, if you wanna jump in. Absolutely. Uh, the main thing, wait, let me look at this question real fast. I know you just said it. Um, yeah, when you begin a project, what is the process? So, the number one important process to get everything I mentioned, um, how to involve community members, how to, how to unite and involve different sectors of the community like businesses and nonprofits, uh, it starts with exactly what we're doing here. Um, finding a need, um, identifying the problem and working creatively to come up with the solution. And 
what I want to speak more about is this unity aspect. Um, as an emerging like social leader that I'm becoming, I think the most important part is the paradigm shift of what leadership really is. And leadership is creating other leaders. And one thing that's really important for my work within Walls for Justice and kind of like my future vision is the development of other leaders so that they can do the same work that we have done here, but for other parts in their communities and different cities. And the unity part is the most important part when we can actively work together and work towards the shared goal and mission, it becomes a lot easier to find the bridge that connects us, which is, you know, art and using the creative solution, whatever that may be. It can be a mural painting. It can be the redesign of a flyer. Um, yeah, that's pretty much kind of where my head is right now. And if you want to develop a project with residents, um, no matter who you are, I think the most important thing to do is find the local leaders who are creating things and finding how you can use your talents to uplift and support them. So for example, uh, one work that I'm particularly focused on in the work that I'm doing this summer is supporting local leaders and different nonprofits to use art as creative solutions for social change. Now, one of my ideas that I had in, I got reached out by some city officials in regards of like dumping and trash dumping. I know I see I'm Yadi here, one of the community leaders in Fairhill doing immense, awesome work with the litter and trash that's happening in her neighborhood. And as I sat in a community meeting similar to this one, um, you know, it's important to hear what's the problem. So what I found is that the problem is trash you know, being accumulated in the neighborhood by either residents or people developing and working, trying to find ways which you can work a creative solution in. So my creative solution for the city was, um, they had plans to create like informational flyers to pass through all the neighborhoods and businesses. And, you know, I kind of set a question like, what do you think will happen to some of this like informational paper? Um, it might get thrown in the, in the trash and create more like litter. So my idea behind that was to turn the flyer into an artistic work of art that we can use to highlight a local artist from that neighborhood that can create a work of art that speaks directly, you know, from the community, get the voices from the community. And I think people will be more inclined to share a flyer that was created by someone in their community that, you know, someone that took the time to artistically create a flyer that can connect with people. Um, sort of like what Zerby did with the remake of the flyer for um, this presentation. Uh, you know, there was a normal informational flyer and Zerby used his talents to transform and create the flyer into something beautiful everyone who saw that flyer was just like telling me like yo who did this? this is so amazing and that's just one example of how you know artists like ourselves can work directly with community members and other nonprofits to be a part of the solution and that's it <laughs> you know how you know when we're approaching this this work is also about how do we when Sam talked about unity, right? Um, so there's like this space that there's space enough for everybody here. And, um, you know, what I really enjoy about the, the work and approaching it is looking for the talent that's already in the neighborhood or what's right, what's so close to us, what's around us. Like, you don't have to go far to see the talent and the gifts that are available uh, within our community. and. Um, yeah, I just want to uplift all of y'all because that's what a part of the work that Fine Art Through Our Eyes Passion is when I mentioned about, you know, really focusing on artists of color. Um, 
because we 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 want to like lift you up. We we say that you know we think about it as we don't need other people to come and lift up you all. We can lift each other up. And we can celebrate each other and we can celebrate our communities and honor our communities and all the wealth, like from the architecture that's in the neighborhood and, you know, the person on the block that plays music and this person that can teach dance. Like we try to think about and look at all the assets that are around us and give an open invitation to folks to have space for that to happen and, and bring that type of energy around that people can feel comfortable because a lot of times you can give out a flyer, you can have a meeting, you can have an event, but if you don't have that space, that aura and openness that um, I believe Tang talked about that breaks down those barriers and walls that people feel comfortable in entering, then we really didn't do anything. So. We, 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 we just think about trying to, pr you know, promote it from that perspective. And, you know, I'm thinking about that. That's why, like, you know, um, Sam can go from different neighborhoods and Zerby can work on multiple projects because we feel like those barriers don't have to exist. And, and, and we're the ones that really will probably lead the charge in tearing some of them down. So I just want to give a shout out to y'all. Um, I'm excited about, we work with Sam over on the Swanson Street mural and I'm like super hyped to have, we just be on this platform with all of y'all tonight, Zerby and I'm just meeting you team, but I know I'll pass the clock again. So can you just reiterate the question one more time for me? So I wanna make sure. By the way, Cassandra, I've heard about you um, as well. So um, I'm excited to finally just meet you on here and look forward to doing some work together for sure. But go ahead, Bay. So the question was um, like, what are your, what is your process? What are the steps that you take when you start a new project with residents, with organizations, with the community? So I have multiple processes that I uh, go on, but some of you guys in here might know um, one of my mentors um, in life, uh, Victor Negron, um, so, you know, this guy, I've known this guy for like ever and Victor, those of you guys that know Victor, he's been an activist. I mean, for damn near all his life, um, him and his wife are incredible people. But one thing that Victor always shared with me was when, like, you know, when you ask, like, what do you do that the, the main thing is doing is like going out there and starting like the point to just start, um, one of, the, one of the things that we did, for example, at Sunflower Philly initially was that um, there's two other members of the team, Melvin and Asher and I, we would just go around the corner like of our property and just collect the trash outside. Me being the only one from the team that's actually from the neighborhood, I used that to kind of like talk to a neighbor and be like, yo, what you doing? You know, just kind of politic and, and and you know they ask me what I'm doing I'm like picking up trash you should pick some up with me and um you'd be surprised how willing people are when you make it into a fun thing I always say that one is doing and two is making what you're doing fun it has to be relative it has to be something attainable um and the attainable part what I've noticed with my murals and this is not only in Philly because I want to I want to be I, I guess a little clear with this because I love this conversation so much and you guys would be surprised how many other cities in the United States as well as you know across the world are affected by things that we're talking about now and one of the things that I've noticed that I've had huge success in murals here in Philly and abroad is making the community a part of the process gives the community a sense of belonging and a sense of ownership. So what happens, right? When you own something, you take care of it. When you're a part of something, you feel proud of it. So in doing those things, what the things that I've noticed is that, you know, people seem more receptive to take care of it. They're policing the work themselves. So you don't got to go around and Zerby could tell you one of the things with me and not tooting my horn or anything, but I've, you know, again, been doing this for so long and I try my best to treat everyone with respect and treat everyone as an equal. 
And I've been blessed that the murals that I paint are respected to the point that like mural arts will call on me to kind of go and like be a part of a mural or just be there just so the vandals don't vandalize the mural just so they could say tame is a part of this um recently me and zerby been working on trying to clean up a mural that was vandalized and that's basically what i'm working on now just kind of saying hey guys like you know i'm a part of this now kind of leave it alone um but for me is 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 connecting with the community from the get-go like i always tell people a lot of people do so much like we um cassandra you was talking about like us empowering each other from within instead of having somebody from the outside do it. One of the things that I've noticed is people come into the neighborhood and they come after they done did so much and then they try to connect. It's kind of too late. So you got to connect from the, from the roots. And as you're connected from the roots, as you're coming up, people from the neighborhood are coming along with you. They take, you're taking them on a trip. You're taking them, you know, kind of like through the process. So then when you do, have to, you know, when life, you know, kind of shifts and you got to go somewhere else or do something else, that standing community, that community that you've already built through the art, there that that train is still in motion because you already set set that emotion. And they're not only proud of doing it in a way of like, oh, I'm doing this because Tame started it. They're doing this because we started it. You see what I'm saying? And that part I think is um for me, like, you know, again, I'm just speaking on my own personal um, point of view. That has been the most success I've had with murals um, everywhere I've done them, just connecting with the community. Like, that's my, like, I don't paint nowhere until I do, like, a two-day connected with the community. That's like if I go to Mexico, go to Puerto Rico, go anywhere here in Philly, I connect with the community. You know, I try, like, I'm blessed. I have a few partners who sponsor some of my events. We'll do, like, free coffee or free donuts for the community. Talk to them. Um, as well, I think, and I'll, and I'll end with this. One of the biggest things that I've noticed with the community, and I've seen that Sam does this, and I know Zerby has participated in things like this as well, is having a panel with the community and getting input from them before the project starts. So as the project is starting from the beginning, they already feel included. They're already backing you. You already got the support. So it's kind of like a smooth sailing after that. You know what I'm saying? So I know I said a lot, but I'll stop there. That's great. Thanks. Zerby, do you want to have the final word? We uh, we need to wrap up the conversation. Um, sure. I think um, yeah. Um, I think a lot of what everybody sort of touched on, for me, the beginning process is kind of what, first off, what is the goal you're trying to do with whatever you're creating or engaging. The other, like Tame kind just said, you got to listen to the people involved. I feel like in a lot of communities, they're being heard but not listened to. And and when you listen to people, that's when you get like the real, the real stories and down their roots and when people can share. And people forget like art, it's not like, art is this interactive thing. I can paint a picture, but if no one sees it, it doesn't matter. It could be the best masterpiece in the world, but without interaction from people, then there's no point to it, you know? So, and then I think like, uh, I always enjoy creating like community driven art or working with other artists because it, it helps one for me personally to keep to always be weighing things and viewing things from different standpoints and and to stay humble a little you know to like be able to like at least view those points of view whether i understand and that gives me the ability 
to learn those story things from their stories and then sort of and then that that is how you connect and then I I always say like presence is important when people see you and see your work like a lot like Tame does make make sure you're reaching out to people and and listening to them and really connecting with people like a lot of times I see uh projects and and that's cool but like they come in it's like a day thing and I'm fortunate enough I do like a lot of mural work so it it's like sort of commitment to that and like I don't know I I do some projects maybe you're there the whole summer so why would I not engage with the community because like I I'm like I'm in there so it's important to like support that community also like the other thing is like the community of your the artists you work with some of these projects like came just that we were working on a thing i just work with sam cass i'm always going back and forth with you anymore like like it takes more sometimes and maybe this is the lead artist or whatever but there's always like, or maybe you're not even involved in the art process, but there's a project manager or there's so many layers to doing these things. And then don't under, like none of it matters if like the people you're focusing on don't enjoy the thing then you kind of miss missed your mark I feel thank you Zerby thank you Sam thank you Tamarts thank you Cass um, this was a really great conversation I wish we had more time to to take questions and, and keep going um, if anyone's interested in hanging around after we do some quick announcements um, we can I can I have a couple of videos to share